All right then, so now we have this notifier provider, which we're using inside the cart screen widget to access the cart state. But at the moment, that state is always the same. It's not being changed. And the whole idea of using a notifier provider was so that we could update the state, change it, and then notify consumers about it. So how do we do that then? Well, all we have to do is define methods within the notifier class that we made, which then give the state new value. So let's quickly define one to add a new product. And we're going to call this function add product. And this is a void method since it doesn't actually return a value. Now in this function, I'm going to accept an argument, which will be of type product. And that's going to be the product that we want to add to the set of products in the state. So I'm just calling this argument product. Now then inside any method we define in this class, we get access to a state object. And the state object is whatever the current state is. To begin with, that's just a set with this, just one single product inside it. But what we can do is assign a new value to the state by setting it equal to something else. And we have to do that. We can't just push a new item onto the state by using methods like add. We have to assign a completely new value to the state for it to update. Now, before we do that, we only want to give the state a new value if this product doesn't already exist in the set. So we can do a little if check to find that out by saying if, and in parentheses, we can say not, so exclamation mark, and then state.contains, and then pass in the product to that method that we're taking in as an argument to the function. So what we're doing here is we're taking the state value, which is a set remember of products, and we're using the contains method to see if it contains the product that we're trying to add. And we only want to fire the code inside the if statement to update the state value if it doesn't already contain that product, which is why we say if not. So not in front of this. All right, so in this code block, we can say state is now equal to new set, completely new set. And inside that, we can use spread syntax to spread the current items already in the state. And then after that, we can add new product to the set too. So now when we call this method from somewhere else, we'll be passing in a product as an argument. And then if that product isn't already in the state, we'll be updating the state value to be this new set, which contains that product, that new product inside it, as well as all of the current products as well. And when that happens, any consumer widget, which consumes this provider state, get notified about that change, which then triggers their build function to rerun and they get that updated state value. So now let's try using this method from inside the home screen to add new products to the cart. Now, if we go to that home screen widget and scroll down, you can see already we're outputting one of two buttons, either a button that says remove if this product's already in the cart product state or a button that says add to cart if it isn't. So it's inside the on pressed handler for the add to cart function that I want to call that method that we just made. So inside this function, I'm going to take the ref object, which we use whenever we want to communicate with the provider, right? And on this, I'm going to this time use the read method, which is typically what we'd use if we want to access any methods on the notifier. And inside this read method, we pass in the cart notifier provider. And then at the end of that, we access a property on that called notifier. And this lets us access the underlying notifier instance. So then after we close the parentheses, we can access any of those instance methods on this. The one we created was called add product. So we can invoke that and try to add a new product to the state. And as an argument, we need to pass in the product we want to try and add to the state. And we have access to that by saying all products and then passing in the index. And that's all there is to it. Now we're accessing the notify instance and calling the add product method on it to access or rather to update the state by adding a new product. And now when that state changes, any widget that consumes the state will rebuild and get access to the updated state value. So let's see if this works. So let's go back to the home screen then and try adding something to the car like the electric guitar. And when we do that, notice the button changes to the remove button because now this product has been added to the state. Therefore, this widget has been rebuilt because it watches that state, that provider. And since this is now in the cart, we show the other button instead, the remove one, because cart product contains that product. All right, so the state has updated and we can verify that by going to the cart itself and seeing 
the electric guitar is in it. Let's try adding another one, drum and sticks. That changes to remove. Go to the cart and it's there, awesome. All right then, so now we want to add another method to remove items from the cart because if we click on this, obviously nothing happens at the minute. We don't have anything inside this function. So let's go to the cart provider first of all and create that function. And in fact, I'm just gonna paste this in and I'll go through it. So we call it remove product. We pass in as an argument the product we wanna remove. We check if the state contains that product first of all. And if it does contain that product, then we fire this bit of code where we update the state by setting it equal to a new value. And that new value is the current state where the product in that state as we iterate through matches the ID of the product that we pass in here. So rather doesn't match. So if the IDs don't match, then we're essentially keeping that product in the state because if the IDs don't match, that's not the product we wanna remove. If the IDs do match, then we're essentially removing that from the state, okay? All right, so let's save this then and call this function from the home screen inside the other button over here. So what we'll do is copy this because we use the same methodology. We use the read method on the ref. We read the cart notifier provider, then get access to the notifier. Then we want to remove a product instead. And we still pass in the same argument, which is all products and then the current index. So let's save this and then we'll try removing some of these things. So this one, cool, go to the cart and it's not there. Let's remove the backpack, go to the cart and it's not there, awesome. So this is all working. 